Hi, John Sarton here with the Rio Grande Jewelry Tech Team. Today I'm here to talk to you about the L45 hydrogen torch. I'm going to show you how to assemble the torch as well as mix the solutions for the torch. All right, let's talk about what uh, comes with the machine. So it's the machine itself. It is a, a funnel, what they call a booster tank. It comes with the torch handle and the hose, and then it comes with a total of six uh, burner tips, uh, two of each size, and the sizes are 0.6 millimeter, 0.7 millimeter, and 0.8 millimeter. Along with the machine, you're going to need some consumables. So you need to get uh, electrolyte solution. Now this solution is uh, 180 grams. It is the, uh, the perfect amount of mix for the L45. You're going to need the Hydroflux solution, need methyl alcohol. You're also going to need a container, uh, plastic or glass container that will withstand uh, the temperatures almost boiling water, along with a glass stirring rod. Uh, I like to use a glass stirring rod. You could use uh, a metal stirring rod, but I like to use a glass stirring rod. You also need some rubber gloves and you need to have eye protection. The last thing that you're going to need is either distilled or deionized water. You can get this at any store. Just look for regular distilled water uh, at your local supermarket. So I fill my container with uh, half a liter of water, uh, 500 milliliters of water, and uh, now I'm going to add the electrolyte solution. So let's open this up, and you're going to want to go ahead and pour the, all of the solution into your water. Go ahead and start stirring. There is a uh, exothermic reaction that happens whenever you mix uh, the electrolyte solution uh, with your distilled water. Um, it's going to get hot. So um, you need to go ahead and stir it. You might hear a little bit of uh, bubbling. Um, and once you feel that you've got it stirred up, pretty much everything in solution, go ahead and stop stirring. And now you're going to have to let this thing set and cool down, which is going to be probably about an hour. Uh, while we're waiting for this to cool down, we'll go ahead and we'll mix the flux solution. To mix the flux solution, you're going to need a scale because you need to weigh out the exact amount of 15 to 20 grams of the uh, dry mix. A good thing to use is actually a coffee filter. Um, it already kind of has a bowl shape and as you, uh, as you pinch it, you can actually just pour it right into the bottle. So let's go ahead and get that onto the scale and we're going to tar out the scale. And then we're going to use a spoon and we're going to weigh out 15 grams. 15 grams is a minimum, so um, if you do go over a little bit, that's okay. Um, just so long as you don't exceed 20 grams of flux solution. Let me go ahead and open up methyl alcohol. There is a uh, foil seal on it. So you can take just a pan, pop that foil seal, and peel off the foil so that you can actually then pour your flux dry mix directly into the bottle. If you go slow, and you'll get all of that flux solution, at least most of that flux solution, into the bottle. And then all you have to do is cap it and give it a shake. What the flux solution does is it actually uh, provides a little bit of a fluxing um, effect to your soldering pieces and it also colors your flame because hydrogen burns colorless. We need to remove the safety cap. So um, this is the cap on top of the tank that we're going to be pouring our uh, electrolyte solution into. Use the funnel that the machine came with. Now the electrolyte solution, it's been about an hour, and the electrolyte solution is, uh, is cooled down. 
Um, you never really want to put recently mixed electrolyte solution into the machine until it has cooled down. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to turn the machine on and you're going to put it into the second position. Uh, the second position you can see right here there is a funnel uh, along with a, uh, a pitcher. Um, so you need to turn that into uh, that position and on this side you're going to see green lights and a yellow light. Um, these are going to show you where your fill level is in the tank. So you really need to be in a position where you can watch this pretty carefully. So I'm going to turn this. Hope you guys can still see that. And I'm going to start to fill the machine. This is going to take a little while. Take your time. Um, you don't want to spill any of this uh, solution out. A good thing to have is some vinegar um, handy. So if you do spill it or, or uh, uh, have to clean it up, then you can use the vinegar to neutralize the solution. Uh, so you can see now that the yellow light has went off. We're going to continue to fill it up until this red light just comes on. There it is. It just came on. Now stop filling up. You don't want to fill it up any more than that. Make sure that the funnel is empty. And, uh, and now uh, we can go ahead and put the safety cap onto the machine. Okay, now that we've got the electrolyte solution in the machine and our uh, safety cap back on, I'm going to turn the machine into the off position. So I'm going to rock it into the neutral position. Now you see the lights went out. Now the machine is in the off position. Here is a good time to make sure that your dial control, this is what is going to control the amount of gas running through your torch is into the zero position as well. We're going to now add flux to our booster tank. The booster tank has actually two chambers. There's a, an outer chamber and then there's an inner chamber and this inner chamber has threads in it. This is what's going to be threaded onto the stem of the machine. You don't want to get flux into this inner chamber. So the easy way to do it is actually just cover it with your finger while you're filling. Another thing you need to take note of is there is a minimum and a maximum level. You don't want to go above the maximum level. And you're going to have to gauge that by just looking down into the container and kind of gauging it um, to make sure that you're not above that level. I like putting my solution kind of like in the middle. All right. So start to fill up the tank. And just by looking on the inside of the tank, um, I can tell that I'm right about here. Now we're going to attach the tank to the machine. There's a stem here and you're going to uh, put the tank up into the stem and engage the threads that are on that stem. Now, one way of making sure that you are, uh, you're going to engage the threads properly is by actually turning the knob backwards. So kind of like whenever you're unscrewing it. And and pushing up on the tank a little bit whenever you're doing that. And as you do that, you can actually feel whenever the threads kind of fall down and engage. Right there. Even actually heard a little bit of a thunk. But you can actually feel the threads fall down and engage. And then you can go ahead and turn it to the right. Um, one thing you want to make sure is you don't cross thread this connection. Now tighten this up until you just feel uh, snug resistance and what happened what what's going on there is there are gaskets here that seal so you don't want to over tighten this all right now we're going to attach the hose to the machine and the hose attaches here to the side of uh, the bo booster tank uh, uh, attachment it also has a nut and this is a hose nut you're going to take your hose thread it through the hose nut and then push it up on the stem. Push it up as high as you can get it and then go ahead and thread the nut back on. The nut actually will compress the hose tighter onto that stem. Again with this you just want it snug you don't want to over tighten it. 
Now you're ready to start the machine up. Again, make sure that your knob is in the, in the zero position. And instead of rocking the switch down, you're going to rock it up. That is the on position and you can actually hear the fan kick on. Now is the time that you want to uh, let it generate uh, hydrogen for just a few minutes. And then we'll go ahead, install a burner tip and uh, we'll light the torch. Okay, the machine's been running about 10 minutes and uh, I'm going to attach a burner tip to the torch. All I do is uh, take the tip and push it onto the end of the torch. It's just a friction fit. Uh, you don't have to screw it on. It's very easy. And then I'm gonna reach over here and turn up the dial. Um, on the top of the machine is a chart. Uh, see if I can get my cameraman to show you that. So this is a chart and it shows the tips. It shows the colors of the tips. It shows the size of the hole in the tips. And it also shows you a minimum and a maximum uh, on your power adjustment. Now I'm using the green tip and it says a minimum of six and a maximum of 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it on seven. And at this point, you should be able to feel a flow of gas coming out of the torch tip. Now the torch tip does not have an on and off valve like a regular torch. While the machine is running, it is producing gas and the gas is flowing readily right out of the tip. So all you need to do to light it is get a striker and light it. All right. So on the green tip, which is the largest tip for this machine, uh, this is at set on number seven and this is the flame that you're going to get about on a number seven power setting. This taking it all the way up to 10, you're going to get a much larger flame. This is the largest flame that you're going to be able to achieve out of this, out of this particular machine. Now, earlier I told you about the, uh, there is no valve on this, on this uh, torch. So the way that you shut this off is actually by holding the handle and pushing this stem into the torch handle. There is a spring in here, so it's a spring action. So as soon as you push it in, it extinguishes the flame. As soon as you let go of it, now you still have flowing hydrogen out. All right. One thing that you never want to do is just reach over here and flip this switch and shut the machine off. In doing that, you're going to create a flashback and that's when the, the flame will actually start to crawl back through the torch to the machine. So always remember, before you turn this machine off, to extinguish the flame, and then it's safe to reach over and turn the machine off. I hope this information has been helpful, and if you have any questions, please contact us.